strong, empowered, authentic. What's up, Ginger Nation? This is Tosh. This is Darren, and you are listening to the Authentic Ginger Podcast. What's up, Ginger Nation? I'm Darren Roach. And I'm Tosh Taylor. Today, we have a guest that I am super, super excited to talk with today because I love history. I love facts. <laughs> um, and so we brought Meg Lushwa on with us today. Meg is down in Nova Scotia as well. And uh, Meg is like the resident witch, if you will, down there. <laughs> The resident redheaded witch. Redheaded witch, exactly. Yes. I, I had kind of I had put out into the universe uh, to a friend of mine who uh, is witchy and she's in she has the connections and I was like I need someone who would be able to talk with us about you know uh, historic redhead witches and witches in history and then you just happen to be a redhead too which was like <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. So, uh, Meg, I don't also don't want to forget the fact that you're an artist and you do energy work and readings. And I want to thank you for taking uh, your time today to join us on the podcast. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll tell you what, you know, Tasha, I wanted to get started on on some a couple of facts here that I've been doing some research on because I I'm really hoping Meg will touch on these uh, once uh, once I launch them here in some cultures today, particularly in Africa, where voodoo and magic are still central to their belief systems. Redheads are still thought to be witches. That to me is still mind blowing that that is even still exists today. But I can't wait to talk about that. So that's that's one fact. What do you think about that one, Meg? I believe it. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> good. I've had people from other countries come to me and, and hesitate and wow. almost walk the perimeter around me and just stare. <laughs> So I, I can see how that could be, especially we're so rare in some parts of the world. Yeah. I have had people do that to my daughter too. Well, they just look at her and go, can I just touch her hair? Yeah. Like people from other cultures like that's, that's always, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Depending on what the mood is for the day. No. Here's another one. Um, it is a widespread folk belief that redheads are witches probably because of their rarity. So we just talked about that. Tell us about you, Meg. Tell us about growing up ginger, because we like to have that conversation with people and kind of the, <laughs> the pluses and minuses. Did you grow up in Nova Scotia? No, I grew okay. up in Toronto. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it's interesting because all those things that you brought up, I've actually experienced um, wow. in my life uh, so far, because I grew up in a, in a place in Toronto. It's very multicultural. So I was, a, I was actually a minority being this like tall redhead in school, I was like the only white person in my class. And a lot of the cultural beliefs were like, she's a witch. And I remember going into school once and they moved my chair, their chairs away from my desk because they thought I was going to cast some crazy spell. And this was grade five. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. And I've had, it's so interesting that you bring these up because I've had um, crazy old little nonas chase me. No, you can't come here. You witch, you witch. And crazy, heavily Catholic religious people mm -hmm. uh, not allowing me to be friends with their, their grandkids or their children because of my red hair. Oh my because gosh. I was, I, I was a witch. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. yeah, um, I was very confused because mm -hmm. I just love people. And I'm like, hey, you look so different than me. Let's celebrate. <laughs> 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 so I did cause a lot of fear in a lot of um, people. And it was very heavily um, Roman Catholic where I grew up too. And uh, I'm not sure if that's the reason, but uh, I got a lot of uh, looks and a lot of walking across the roads even as a child. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And do you come like, do you have any ginger siblings or either one of your parents? I do. I come okay. from gingers. Um, my mother's a ginger. <laughs> uh, she has very curly hair mm. and uh, my sister has a strawberry blonde ginger. And my um, mom's father was very blonde, almost, almost red, but more so blonde. And my dad's mother was also a ginger. Wow. Um, we, we have a, it's a rare when, uh, you know, they say a, usually a redheaded mom doesn't have redheaded kids and my mom had two of us. So, um, 
Yeah. <laughs> the, wit, the witch jeans are strong. Yeah. They're strong. <laughs> They're just active. They got to keep the lineage going. Exactly. That's right. So do you think, do you, like, I just like with so many people, I hate to say being afraid of you, but that's kind of yeah. like the way it comes across. Right. Do you yeah. think that that kind of set you into motion with what you're doing with your lifestyle now now like we when we say you're the resident witch can we please <laughs> explain to people because some people are still so naive okay <laughs> yeah. well first i i think because i just i uh, oh this is a deep dive here first of all just locally i i am i'm almost six feet tall i have red hair tattoos um, I wear, I collect bones. <laughs> okay. So I live on a military base where I have bones in my front yard. So like, there we go. Like, there we go. <laughs> and I just think they're cool, but I really, I've always connected. Uh, my father's actually quite uh, eccentric. Like he loved bones and stuff like that. So it was a shared passion. <laughs> so um, there's that. I also grow herbal medicines and I'm always in my garden in the summer. And, Amazing. Um, I drum <laughs> uh, with a, a leather band drum and um, I sing often and I talk to my plants. So I'm that lady. They're like, what is she doing? <laughs> and I'm like, grow lavender. You're so beautiful. So there's that. Um, I've always loved fantasy when as a child, I've always loved the redhead, uh, which I guess the, that I, my husband calls me a hedge witch, just that woman who's collecting herbs in the background and she kind of isn't in any circle but she everyone kind of flocks to her even if they're scared of her kind of deal and I've yeah. always resonated with that <laughs> I like that too right it's it's good to have the person you're slightly afraid of on your side oh yeah. she's kind of like I don't know about you right now but okay I think it is um my mother and my grandmother always said I had a sixth sense because I would know how to find things or I just kind of um, would just know like where, where to go or how to find whatever they were looking for. I'd have dreams, very, very crazy dreams. And so some premonitions would actually happen. Um, did I trust them or know what they were? The child? No. And the nineties were there and the craft came out. I was like, that's it. That's yep. who I am. Yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> no one likes me anyway. Cause I look weird. I might as well give them a title. Like I might as well own it, you know? And, um, I've always been a misfit that way. And um, I just connect, I just connect to it. I like nature and I like being a little bit, if I want to be so stand out, I might as well stand out a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. so. How old were you when you started to realize that you had sort of something different? Like, you know, your, your mind would take you to these premonitions or, or, or whatever. Um, how old of a, a person or, or a child were you at that point? Um, I was around 14. When okay. I realized that I, some things, like I was aware of it, I kind of shut it down. I didn't believe in myself or any of that yeah. um, just because of all of the uh, negativity uh, surrounding me already. But I noticed the patterns in dreaming that cool. would happen. And I was about 14. Yeah. yeah. And they, uh, were, uh, they were scary. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. Were you, were you reading uh, books or any kind of literature on this? at that same time um, frame or did you go wait a second like maybe I should start reading into this if I'm having them so which came first well I had actually struggled reading um my whole life because I would hear too much sound around me I couldn't um focus on mm -hmm. looking up so I didn't really have YouTube or anything back then. right <laughs> <laughs> yeah so barely the I internet just, yeah what so I would find the little occult shops around town, you know, the mystics and the stuff that sold crystals. And I would ask questions. And uh, my oh. grandmother, actually, she was a very special woman. Uh, my Nana Marg, she saw this. She was the only one in my family who kind of saw it. And she would buy me books on the Zodiac or how to make herbal potion for healing. And she, I always tended to get the weird books from her, right. <laughs> which were very visual. So I could both see and read them together. And I was like, oh, Hey, wait a minute. Ooh, I just got the chills. <laughs> I was like, this, this really just speaks a language to me that I really understand because it was almost a lack of words that made me understand more because it was a feeling and a sensation. And mm. um, so then I started investigating in more um, 
indigenous cultures around the world actually to see how they dealt with people um, who was more clairvoyant or felt energy and I just started asking questions and I am still asking the question. Good. Oh, don't Lord. stop. Don't right. stop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever try to hide your hair? Oh, always. I hate my hair. Actually, I wish I loved it as a child. I'm only now starting to fall in love with it as she uh, turns white. Um, I was never allowed to dye my hair. <clears throat> so I would shave my hair off. I would wear hats all the time. Um, I tried dreadlocking it. I would like, I had a hatred for my hair. I just <laughs> wore so much makeup. I still wear a lot of makeup. I just, I just was so upset with it and uh, I wanted it to go away and people would come and touch it and pull it and, and touch me. And I, I didn't want to do that. And, and I had I had hair down past my waist at one point, and I remember going to my mom or someone, and I'm like, "Can you just get rid of it? Like I passed scissors, like I can't have this hair anymore." But I mean, it never went away. It was yeah. still there. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah, it was vi more vibrant when I was younger. Before I had children and stuff too, and it's very thick. It's it's like I think of the girl from Brave. It's just this big. I straight ironed it and I pin it all back, and it's just insanity. Um, and then not having eyelashes or eyebrows to match. It was just like, why? Yeah. No wonder yeah. they thought we were witches. Good God. <laughs> like, I don't even rarely freckle. I was like, at least give me freckles. Like, something. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just turned pink to yeah. lighter pink. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know about you, but I have said this before on the show. My Mine is the same. It's super thick, water repellent. <sighs> Yes, it, like it, it <laughs> built in scarf in the winter. It's like you can bend it. It, it stays. It's just so fake. Like, yeah, it's, it's and this too, like this straightness is not mine. That's a straight. No, part. that's like, that's like yeah. this, this is faux. This is not real. <laughs> Usually it would be like sticking right up, you know? Yeah. My sister's is silky and curly and very, it's just beautiful. She reminds me of like a wheat field and the sunset kind of deal. Like Amazing. it's very, uh, very, very gorgeous. And yeah. Look, she reminds me of light. I don't know how else to explain it. That's a beautiful way. I hope you've told her that before. I, a I beautiful have. way to describe I, her. Yeah. <laughs> she's quite she's quite unique. Yeah. She's I think she should have wings spread on her back that she looks like a fairy in that. So let's let's get into uh, kind of so you have all these books from your grandmother. Mm -hmm. When did you start realizing that the people that you're reading about and you're learning about are are you? right? Like that they're your ancestors. You're giving me the chills. Sorry. Um, to be, to be, to be 100% honest. Um, I realized this when my second child was born. Uh, it's taken me that long of a journey to have that belief in myself. Mm -hmm. um, when I had her, I, I put it out there. I wanted to meet like-minded individuals and I was hanging out with a lot of wild women and they were like, Hey, you have this gift. I'm like, what are you, what are you talking about? And, uh, you know, and uh, after having children, I really got more sensation in um, feeling energy changes around me. And oh, even now I can feel it. Like I got more dreams coming to me and books would just land in front of me to read. Like it wasn't even me searching anymore. It was, I'd be at a shop and a book would fall down or someone said, Hey, here's a book. You really need to read this. And I would be like, Jeez. okay. And I just read about the Avalonian women and King Arthur. And my ancestors just were like, Whoa, you have to do more research. And so I've been down a few ginger mm -hmm. rabbit holes and a few witchy rabbit holes lately. And I'm trying to really honor the lineage that I have now um, that gave me the gift of having ginger hair. Now I wish I talked to small me saying it's a gift. They were right. <laughs> but she was so rebellious that she couldn't see the beauty uh, in that. So yeah, uh, about my youngest daughter's five. So five years ago, I really kind of stepped in to me. So do you, do you get frightened yes. at all by knowing that you have these powers? Every day, um, especially as my daughters are growing and I'm noticing they're they're seeing and feeling things that I saw as a child um, where I was told, Shh, no, 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 that's not real. I'm like, oh my God, 
guys, this is real. But then I have to like, thank you, Joe. I have to um, sit and think their ages. Like I can't say, hey, yeah, those shadow people are real. Let's talk to them or tell them to go away. I have to really like step forward and be confident and step into courage and, and see how I'm going to deal with this situation because it's not an easy thing for myself nor to talk to children about. Um, sorry, my husband just gave me coffee. That's why I, I <laughs> excuse myself there. But um, he, uh, yeah, like just the other day, I was in a thought because I have daydreams, literal daydreams. So when sometimes I go up to someone like I had a dream and people think, oh, she must have been sleeping. I'm like, no, I was just staring out my window. <laughs> this thing came to me and, um, and a book fell down from my bookshelf. Like, it's not near a window. There was no windows open. My kids weren't there. And it just, it's, it just, it just fell down. And I was like, I guess I have to read you. I don't know if I want to know what you're trying to tell me today, but I think <laughs> in that fear, you can either run away from it, which is the easiest thing to do. Right. Or you, yeah, <laughs> which I've done my whole life, but, or you can just, go forward and realize it's not that scary. It's just scary because it's new or that your mind has told you that it's scary. So I've just been <laughs> diving into the fear aspect now because I know nothing can hurt me because we have free will. Mm -hmm. Nothing can hurt me. A book can't hurt me. Knowledge can't hurt me. It can just only make me learn and, and want to gain more knowledge. What's up, Ginger Nation? If you're looking for authentic ginger swag, go to www.authenticginger.com. Use code AGPODCAST for 20% off your next purchase. If we are to believe uh, in past lives, mm -hmm. and I am a believer that you have a fear that you bring from a life before. <sighs> Oh my heavens, 100%. <laughs> I've just been, see, that's where my rabbit hole is right now. Um, it, it's it's ancestral. It's actually in your DNA. Like there's lots of trauma based in a lot of this stuff. Like it's, you you can dive really deep in this, yeah. you know, yeah. it, it, and uh, science is even going, yeah, yeah, hey, I think this is a thing, guys. And so energetically just, speaking, yeah. And scientifically speaking, they're very on par. Yeah. Um, they just really have different language for it. You exactly. Know? Like exactly. such different language for it. And I've been learning a lot about uh, this word uh, triggers a lot of people, but the word trauma, I realized like you're all of our ancestors have had some sort of deep trauma. And right now my investigation is with a lot of women, especially women with red hair, <laughs> women in my family. I'm starting with my lineage first. And that's, again, the Avalon came up in Welsh, Wales. And I'm learning that um, when the women have their babies in their belly, like they have our DNA and their seeds in our bellies when we're in our grandmother's, in our mother's bellies and our mothers are in our grandmother's bellies. So whatever trauma or whatever they're experiencing at that time is in our DNA when we grow mm -hmm. so sometimes we're experiencing an emotion or a sensation or an anxiety attack or something and we're like I feel fine why am I getting this right now and we forget that we, not that we forget we just don't know that sometimes it really has nothing to do with our specific day it's <laughs> whatever happened to mom <laughs> you know like or grandma or great grandma or you know and I believe men also have this because they were in their mother's wombs and they yep. were experiencing this. It's just a different um, loot, right? And That's it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. as, as a human species, we have all of this happening in our ancestors and we have all of this heavy ancestral work happening, but we're not taught, hey, you know, this is what happened um, in your past. This was the trauma and, and the segregation that happened in your family. And it's, it's very much there um but it's just forgotten there's a lot right. of forgotten history and and a lot of it right is our redhead thing and it's interesting because redheads pop up because it's a gene um in some ways pops up all over the world uh, mm. even if their ethnicity is is different and then they're like whoa <laughs> you are and go a witch and it oh, goes yeah. back to what you were saying earlier um and 
there's some sort of, to me, in a weird way, some sort of divine magic there, <laughs> even though it might just be scientific because it's, I always find like it can, make, it can change your awareness or your thought process on people um, because you meet anyone who looks a little different, you're either going to be curious about them or a little bit hesitant. So I think redheads um, were just kind of like, well, you're just a redhead. <laughs> it's like, we don't really fit in anywhere. We don't have a, it's not like we're a race or we're not like a, a part of anything. We're just born with this gene and it's, it feels almost lonely sometimes, but then you meet other gingers like, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's that like instant connection. I know what you've been through. What kind of ginger you ever color eyes that, you know, like it's yeah. this whole weird, uh, you know, world, um, that, that we live in and, and we all, <laughs> even if we don't practice being like, I don't like really say I'm a witch, but even if you don't practice this stuff, you still have that little bit of mystery yeah. and redheads carry this huge mystery about them that, cause we, you look at when you're even myself, I see other redheads. I'm like, do you tan or do you burn? <laughs> like, <laughs> is your hair curly or really straight for real? Like, it's just these thoughts that we were, cause I, you, humans are naturally also fascinated with humans mm-hmm. too. And there is fear in that. Right. So we can either right. just so hi, my name is and have a conversation or we can again be like, wow, that scares me and walk the other direction. So there's like patterns and how human behavior is as yeah. well. And fear is associated. So. Which is exactly it. Right. Like, the witch trials and like 40 to 60,000 redheads were burned or drowned. Yeah. yeah. That is bonkers. Like, no wonder we're afraid of things. These like Darren's afraid of, of anything supernatural that might happen. That's what I mean. Like if you've got that ancestral trauma and that's somewhere down your DNA, there's a really damn good reason why redheads would be more intuitive and I think yeah. anyway I think so yeah I agree and uh one of the books I was reading is um in Ireland Ireland and Wales this was pre-King Arthur before the Romans uh took over kind of there was a lot of redheads and we were actually more I dare it's hard it's hard saying words lately but we were kind of people of the land mm-hmm. um we were the pagans I guess would be the word for that area and we were people who worked with nature and then Uh, we were known as healers but it's not that we were redheads we were healers we were just a breed of human on that patch of land that had that gene dominantly there was more redheads in wales and ireland than any a lot of places Mm -hmm. and we were fair because of the weather and there was like a lot of we were just that's just what the peoples of that place of earth looked like and so when the catholic like the churches came over and they saw these weird people gathering herbs and making medicines and a lot of them were midwives because that's what medicine makers were back then they they were just people for the people like they were essentially the caregivers but then we look funny Mm -hmm. and then (laughs) they're gathering you know comfrey and berries and it's like a fear that this belief system comes over and they're like you're not doing what we believe in and you're really weird you scare me let's light you on fire today and it's it's just like so many people have fear uh, again on something that's different you know going always kind of goes down to that and I'm like that really makes sad sense that you know people come to a different cup and it's all over the world yes you know, we're experiencing it everywhere that we go um and then they flee or have to become part of the, the, that, that religion or they have to become part of that environment. And if you don't cater to that specifically, and especially women, because women uh, apparently seem to be more intuitive, especially after child or, or their monthly or child a bit rearing, um, it freaks a lot of people out if it doesn't go under their belief system. So I think a lot of that, if you, we don't, you know, wherever you're coming from originally, <clears throat> was a lot of social trauma in that as well that is just again completely forgotten and it is more just folklore now it's more just a fairy tale but you know right a lot of this stuff actually happened it's just we were a lot of them were kind of killed off to tell the tales that and it was just a written story it's like any story um but people chose to believe in a different one mm-hmm. you know and um mm. I feel redheads where if we come from that part, you know, of Britannia, we once were like a 
a, a thing. <laughs> and then I think it just scared a lot of the people coming onto that land. And then we just spread out. It's just a theory. It's just what I've been reading. It's not set in stone. Redheads, we tend to also be known to be loud, to be, yes. you know, um, <laughs> to, to be boisterous and kind of to mm-hmm. be out there. So mm-hmm. of course, if these, if, if these other cultures come in and they are subject to a bunch of people with bright mm-hmm. hair, mm-hmm. loud voices, tons of energy, like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I, I, mm-hmm. I and, and yeah, then they're living off the land. They're making their own medicines. They're healing each other. Then, then there's a pretty good chance. I could see why they'd be like, whoa, who the hell are these people? Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. true. Yeah. It's, they have special what, powers. What they, they just healed my cut. What the heck? Meanwhile, it was the yeah. herd, right? It's the no- and knowledge right. scares people, no matter what you are, whether it's just as simple a fact or, or something spiritual or something scientific. People fear knowledge and they sometimes don't want to know these. And sometimes people get the chills. They're like, ooh. And they're like, oh, that's bad. It gave me the chills. I'm like, mm. chances are when you get the chills, something, dare I say, resonates with you. It's something that your soul's going, yes, hello, pay attention, it's true, keep going, oh, okay, no, you're going to go that way, and uh, when I was reading (laughs) The Women of Avalon, it was about healers, and um, King Arthur loved them greatly, because he, he, they were so caregiving, they were, they were the women, a big war came, and the Roman Catholics came over, and said goodbye to, to, to all of that, but there's so much power in that history, whether it's just known to be a folklore or something that truly exists, it gives your mind something to think about because this was back in like year 640 and, <laughs> and beyond going up to 1120. I don't even know how to say that, you know, a long, 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 long time ago and tales get changed. Stories get changed. Even in Christianity, stories get changed. Um, which I find them to be beautiful stories. I, I love people who have faith and have stories and have passion. It's, it's when you're causing discrimination on someone is what I don't like. And I find redheads <laughs> are so bizarre. We do face a lot of discrimination just for people's stories that they've heard or their ignorance or for or their enjoyment. belief system, for enjoyment. Like I remember kick a ginger day. I was working and these men came up. He's like, so can I kick you today? I was like, excuse me, what? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) What? And then then they changed it to kiss a ginger day. Which is no better. What? I don't know which one I would prefer. Why are you trying to kiss me? It is not funny because if it was anything else, it would be a big no-no. But haha, it's gingers. It's like a leprechaun. (laughs) And it's like, guys, this isn't funny yeah and then I the worst thing I get is don't be so sensitive we're just joking and I'm like if I said that to anybody (laughs) of any other you know people that would be a a, a wrong thing to say oh yeah absolutely Um, and and I I really get I try not to get angry about it because it is just ignorance but it disturbs me (laughs) how it can be okay for people to call me mean names um whether I liked being a witch or not like besides the point Mm -hmm. um because of my hair color because of the way my face looks and you know that's why I started actually two reasons why I wear eye makeup one it helps me see in the sun like baseball players when I put a lot of mascara I'm like wow I can see today (laughs) (laughs) because like the halo is around your eyes and they're not with them and then it helps me feel and this stems from childhood that I can blend in a little bit because my eyelashes are darker and I know it's so silly it doesn't really make sense but it just gives me a bit of peace (laughs) people aren't so gawky and yeah redheads were seen as like the court gestures and Mm -hmm. the the clowns and the comedians Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. you know now they're like side people like the funny best friend in a movie right it's Mm -hmm. you're never the leading yeah always kind of kind of idea and and i'm kind of in my head now putting that theory in with what we were just talking about with with people coming um and finding our culture and finding our red hair Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. that would have been back in the day when it would have been totally fine for you to just take someone and yeah. raise oh, yeah. them to be, you know, like your little yeah. funny person in, in 100%, your, uh, you know, in your kingdom. So yeah. I wonder if that's kind of where uh, I would love to see a spiral as to where these things came down from and how 
um, kind of the, the redhead culture works into it with, with people's fear of red hair, the Mm -hmm. fear of witches. I'm a really firm believer that all of the, um, fairy tales, if you, uh, if you will, or all of the, uh, stories of days of old all had to have started from something that happened for real. Oh, I, I, I think they do just by, from my, my research, it's all about the language. Long, long ago, our language we spoke was completely different than even the English that we speak now. And humans used to write visually, like they would, they would compare something. It was very poetic how they wrote stories. So I, if you don't mind, I, this is one thing I wrote in my, in, read in this book was of the Avalonian is the cauldron. You know, you think of a witch in their cauldron, <laughs> you know, it's over fire. It was actually an underground lake in a cave where there was pearls and crystals growing. And it was thought that's where the healers did their work because they thought the water was so pure in the cauldron. Mm. But if you think of cauldron today, you don't think this beautiful place in nature, you think of a witch's mm. brew. Mm-hmm. with a weird green lady yeah. with a big nose like yeah. and you children going and into children it. going yeah. in it or like <laughs> something weird but really a cauldron was while they described this vast place that was extremely hard to get to this is in wales i believe and you had to go it was this huge healing like you if you had a strong will you would survive to get to this cauldron and you would be healed this is this is the the lore behind it and you would be stronger and and it was known that king arthur actually went there often to be among these women um who would help him and they would um help him with not just healing like not just like with broken limbs it was more of his mind it's like he needed to go and talk hey i have this problem and they would they would counsel it was a council hmm. and it was a cave right. so you would go into this cave and in this cave was that underwater lake like that lake um so it really changed my narrative and perspective on when people say cauldrons or even little languages that come up in any sort of um religion or faith oriented it's like did that truly mean that or were they just using an ex like was it a word to describe something mm-hmm. powerful that mm-hmm. we slowly through time have changed <laughs> to something smaller negative. or scarier or negative or fearful um a lot of the old grim stories are full of of interesting lore and facts but it's been so twisted (laughs) this weird Mm. story but in every story there's a little piece of something has to be from a past there is it's how our mind like even as an artist like I love creating stories with pictures it's it's my passion to just sit and make things whether it's dolls or paintings but there's always something behind me kind of well maybe really I don't know (laughs) but there's always (laughs) something (laughs) telling me a story (laughs) while I'm in this moment of painting and it's funny because people go oh my god that really spoke to me I'm like how did it speak to you the painting but it's how our human mind and our soul kind of works like we see things that speak to us and give us a feeling but sometimes we don't know how to describe it so we use our vocabulary that we know to describe that feeling and then someone will take that and someone will take that so I think a lot of this history um, of the lores and the religions and the, the faiths and the spirits um, do definitely come from a place of of truth mm-hmm. in a really <laughs> stretched out, broad, fearful way. <laughs> I think it. I think it. It does come from from something. And redheads were just thrown into the mix. Like, well, they're different, so you might want to watch them. You know, it's who, who knows where the fears come from, but they're everywhere. You know, mm-hmm. these days we wouldn't even get anywhere oh, close heavens, to the no. story <laughs> unless it was documented and you're still documents about it. Right? And they like probably the, were burned I too. Like <laughs> I mean, like it's it, exactly it's, it's the documents are left for what people resonated with more so that they just kept to the side. They're like this. No. And it's, it's crazy how, and even Googly search. Now you can yeah. Google search like, well, I like that, but I want to know something else and you yeah. can find what you want to hear. So it's so messy and mismatched that you can't get an actual fact yep. anymore about, about, Mm-hmm. I mean, so true. a lot of kings change stories, you know, a lot of people with power change stories, which is kind of like, it's still just, happening seems to be yeah. human nature, you <laughs> yeah. know, like this power trip, like there's so many things 
that I was like, I think sometimes if you, if you truly, I know it might sound scary or hard or not real, but if you truly, truly sit with yourself and allow to feel all of those feelings and fears, you're going to get something, <laughs> no matter if you classified as a witch or, or not. I think if you want to truly learn the lineages and the healing, you're going to be guided some way, whether it's a book falling in front of you already, it's someone you're meeting on a podcast or whether it, whatever it is, it's, it's, it's lining you up to find your truth, the, what resonates with you in your life. And that's what, that's what we want to do with this podcast is we're finding so many redheads are coming into their right of being a redhead mm -hmm. now. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like now's our time. And Ooh, so, <laughs> I know, so I'm, I'm really, really excited about it. And I'm so happy that we got to, to throw it a little bit of history with you today. That has been so much yeah, fun. Thank you. Well, that was Meg Lejoie, and we are so happy to have her on today. We'll see you again next Tuesday here on the Authentic Ginger Podcast. You've been listening to the Authentic Ginger Podcast. Become a part of the Ginger Nation by liking, subscribing, following, and leaving a review wherever you listen to podcasts. This podcast was produced by Tosh Taylor of the Podcast Hub Productions. Find her online at podcasthub.ca.